Donald Trump has wasted zero time in getting right back to what has made him the leading Republican presidential candidate, avoiding issues, calling people by nicknames, and complaining about the voting process. Hey, whine all you want about this, people, but it works. However, Trump has brought up a new issue because he is the one reminding America how the system is fraught with lobbyists and special interests. He's right. Yet the man now in charge of his campaign is bringing those very same people into the effort to help him get elected. Is this hypocrisy or just political business as usual? There is never a usual day when it comes to the Middle East and America. And we're going to spend some necessary time on not only those relationships, but why so many world leaders are worried sick about what a new president will bring to the table. And closer to home, there used to be multi-millions on the table for one sport that claimed to be threatening the NFL for popularity, but is now driving in reverse in their efforts to cash in. The only show that questions everything and everyone and dares you to get involved. I'm Ed Berliner. This is The Hardline for Thursday, April 21st, 2016. Our Republican system is absolutely rigged. It's a phony deal. Now, what do I know? I started running like nine months ago. Who would have thought I would have been in first place? What do I know? Right? What do I know? But I'm in first place by a lot. And he is right. Okay. Donald Trump's correct. He's saying what millions of American voters have been railing against for decades, maybe even generations. The fear that our election process needs a major overhaul to get rid of the special interests and the sometimes sleazy lobbyists who channel elections to fit the needs of their clients. Say it again. He is correct. There is a problem. So then, as the GOP leading candidate railed against lobbyists and special interests again just last evening, why then is his campaign using those very same people? including an individual who was involved in what a congressman called a, quote, very smelly, sleazy business, unquote, to become the next president. One of several top line items we're going to dig into right now. Begin by welcoming veteran campaign strategist and Donald Trump supporter, Salvatore Lamastra, joined by veteran Democratic strategist, Al Motter. Gentlemen, thanks so much for joining us. Let's go ahead and get right to work. Because I tell you what, Salvatore, I'm going to begin with you. And this started out with a lead story in Politico today. Donald Trump's new chief campaign strategist, Paul Manafort, is bringing in people, lobbyists and special interest groups, including a lobbyist, Lawrence Gay, who's worked with Manafort on an effort to obtain a federal grant, one congressman called a very smelly, sleazy business. Rick Gates, ID'd as an agent of a Ukrainian oligarch in a racketeering lawsuit in 2011. Mark Palazzo, a former lobbyist for a Coke Industries subsidiary. Now I'm going to put it to you as a Trump supporter. Donald Trump is right. Special interests and lobbyists are a massive problem in the American electoral system right now. He's railed against it. He hates it. But isn't it hypocritical then if he is now using these very same people to ensure he gets elected? Absolutely not. Donald Trump is a man of incredible intellect and intuition. He has seen that by just his message, by just his policies, he cannot get to the convention because of Ted Cruz, knowing every sleazy rule that has been put in place by party elites, taking delegates away from him. He needs to bring in... Well, let's yes, go ahead and just say a thing. One sec, i got to stop you right there. These rules were not put in place. They have been in place for a long time. So please continue. They have been in place for a long time, and the, the system has been corrupt for a long time, and, yes. and the American people realize that. So Donald Trump realizes now that it's going to be a fight, and he doesn't have the right people in his campaign right now that have gotten him so far to get him through this delegate fight. So he needs to bring in people like this, like Manafort, who has helped Joe Ford, Reagan, and Bush win their nomination to come in and help him secure and maintain these delegates to win the nomination. He's not taking money from these special interests. He's not promising these people anything at all. Yesterday, he went on record saying he denied $5 million from a special interest group. So he's out there realizing that this is a crooked, uh, corrupt system, and he needs these people who understand this crooked, corrupt system to get him into power so he can fix that system. Okay, Al, I'm going to bring you into this as well, because again, I asked, Salvatore answered, he doesn't think it's hypocritical. And you say... Well, thanks for having me on, Ed. I think, first of all, at the top of the show, you said, uh, is this hypocritical? Is this business as usual? And I would say it's both. 
Uh, but I think to Mr. Trump, and I don't know him, but I assume that he doesn't care that it's hypocritical and that what he cares about more is that he has a relationship with Mr. Manafort. He's known him for years. He probably trusts him. And as uh, Sal mentioned, uh, Manafort was integrally involved in the 1976 convention battle, which Mr. Trump may have to repeat should he hope to win. But of course it's hypocritical and of course it's business as usual. And I think it also is an insight into his mind and how it works. He's often asked, what is your foreign policy? What are you going to do in the Middle East? What are you going to do with the economy? And he says, I'm going to get the people I trust the smart people in the room to help me make decisions and here we have an example of who he might choose to do that type of thing. Is it fair to say then, and I'm going to stay with you Al, don't worry Sal, I'm coming back to you, but is it fair to say Al, you've been around this game a long time, that you simply cannot get elected as President of the United States, no matter what party you're in, or even Congress if you will, unless you bring in the lobbyists and the special interests simply because they are so ingrained in the system? Well, lobbyists, special interests get a bad name, Ed. I mean, they are people who have experience in government. They've worked either in the federal executive branch. They perhaps have worked in Congress. That doesn't, by the, their na nature, make them bad people. Uh, they get a bad rap, and sometimes you hire people who have experience to help you navigate arenas that you're not familiar with. So I, wouldn't, I would dispute the tenor of your question uh, while accepting that oftentimes it's necessary to bring those types of people into the fold. All right, let's move on then to something else, because I want to get down to the Republican National Committee, and this one's for you. Sal. The RNC leaders met today in Hollywood, Florida. They voted down the proposal that would have dramatically changed the rules for this summer's convention. They basically said you got to leave it exactly as it is. This has bitterly divided the party at this point. But does this not tell you right now that at least from the Donald Trump camp that Donald Trump wins on this one? And he is right. And maybe this is the way to do it. Don't change the rules. Absolutely. Don't change the rules. I think that definitely helped Donald Trump. It definitely gave a boost to his supporters and the chances that he's going to win the nomination. I mean, I think he'll have this wrapped up before California, but even if he doesn't, I think going in, having these rules in place is definitely beneficial to him and the team he has working for him. Al, let me go ahead and bring it to you then from the left side of things, because Donald Trump, big win in New York, of course, and people say, as you've just heard, even Sal believes that he's going to go ahead and get that. Donald Trump's even said he can have 1,400 uh, delegates by the time he actually gets to the convention. However, on the left, is it not fair to say that whether it's Hillary Clinton, Bernie Sanders, or anybody in the DNC right now, every single time Donald Trump wins a primary, they rub their hands with glee because they feel as if they will just blow him off the map without even worrying about it come November. Well, I wish uh, we were that confident. I think it's uh, always a mistake to underestimate Donald Trump. You see what happened to the Republicans who did that. He's poised to either win the nomination or come awfully close. Uh, and so I think it's a little premature to look at these poll numbers we have right now with Trump trailing by double digits to Secretary Clinton. He's someone who's shown he can close the gap and outperform expectations. And also, I think it's important to look at what he's done in this primary process. He has brought millions of new voters into uh, the electorate who weren't voting before. I read somewhere yesterday that in the New York primary, uh, Trump himself alone received four times as many votes as the entire Republican field in the New York primary in 2012. So clearly he's doing something right. And the notion that Republican operatives can come in and take it away from him, if that's Ted Cruz or John Kasich or somebody else, I think is very dangerous because even if they get someone who in the polls might look better against Secretary Clinton right now, they're going to be dealing with millions of angry and furious Trump supporters who I imagine will feel quite disenfranchised. Al, I'm going to give you some chops right now because you're one of the few people that we have from the left who has actually come on here and said we better not be overconfident. Congratulations. It's good to hear somebody else say that. Let me stay with you for a moment, Al, because here's the talk today about Hillary Clinton and the vice presidential choice. Elizabeth Warren's name keeps getting mentioned and keeps floating around. There's people saying you can't have two women on the ticket, but people say, why not? I've even talked to some Democrats who say, I'm not sure if it would be good for us. Would Elizabeth Warren, in your opinion, be a smart choice for Hillary Clinton as the Veep? Well, I think Elizabeth Warren is a, a very, very bright senator and certainly passionately followed by millions of Americans on the left. It's way too early to make a decision like that. Secretary Clinton's but would it be smart? I, would five. it be smart? Here's the point, Alan. I understand that. You're right. It's, it's way too early to make the, the choice here. But would it be smart, in your opinion? I think what Secretary Clinton needs to do is pick someone that she feels comfortable with, that she has a working rapport with, that she knows on day one is qualified to be president of the United States. 
uh, regardless of gender. If she deems Elizabeth Warren to be that person, then it would be smart. But it's, it's not about the politics as much as it is about the comfort with the pick. It's an intensely personal decision and one I'm sure she'll give considerable uh, uh, diligence to. And so I think it's impossible for me to say whether it's smart or not. I, I would note she hasn't endorsed in this race yet, and so that's intriguing. You get the feeling Elizabeth Warren would accept a VP position? Just your opinion. Don't know her, but it's an awfully attractive position, um, and so I would certainly think she would entertain it. All right, here's the guy that many people on the right, Ted Cruz, for one, believes would like to be Veep under Donald Trump, John Kasich. He did an interview with the Washington Post. He criticized the entire Republican Party. Briefly, here's what he said. I am a, a fundamental believer in ideas. If you don't have ideas, you got nothing. And frankly, my Republican Party doesn't like ideas. They want to be negative against things. You talk about most of them. Most of them, the party is kind of a knee-jerk against. Maybe that's how they were created. I don't know. Hey, Sal, what do you think? It sounds to me like John Kasich, and sounds to a lot of people like John Kasich is sort of kind of paving the way here and saying that Donald Trump might be right, and that leads a lot of people to believe. He said he would never do it. Absolutely. Zero chance. But we all know this is politics, and you never really say never again. Exactly. You never you never say never. And they they always end up coming forth when offered that position. John Kasich, I think, would be an excellent choice. And I, I've been saying this for a long time since the since he announced in the beginning, because Ohio is a must win for Republicans. And one thing people don't mention when they look at John Kasich's record and winning elections in Ohio is when he ran in 2010. And the youth vote's important. But when he won, ran in 2010, he lost the youth vote by double digits. When he ran for re-election in 14, he won it by double digits. It was, I think, it was a 24-point youth vote turnaround, which is amazing. They like his policies. They like him. And he definitely has that kinder, gentler attitude to kind of offset, offset Donald Trump. So <laughs> I think he could, be a, he could be a great pick. But I'm also going to throw out another one I love. Ten seconds. Is Suzanne Martinez of New Mexico. I think she'd be fantastic as VP. You're one of the first people who have said that it would kind of balance out Donald Trump as well and make it a little calmer and maybe a little gentler Donald yep. Trump as well, which is probably what he needs in any general election. Al Mara, Salvatore Lamastra, gentlemen, thanks so much for being here. We look forward to talking to you again. Now, what could be the beginning of the end of the Internal Revenue Service? But not if they have anything to say about it. Grover Norquist joins us next for that and more when we continue right here on The Hardline.